Hello, everyone, and welcome to Momentum Mondays. On these weekly series, every Monday, we invite one inspiring young man or woman to our show and talk to them about important topics, including investing, financial planning, and uh, financial education. Many of our guests include fellow YouTubers and investors who I've followed on YouTube and enjoyed their contents. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of Momentum Mondays. My name is Mo, and I'm super excited to have with us here today, JR. Welcome to the show, JR. Hi, Mo. How are you? I'm glad to be here. Yeah, welcome to the show. We are super excited to have JR. Um, I've stumbled upon uh, JR's channel um, several months ago, have been following his content, and really inspired by uh, the thoughts thoughtful and insightful videos that he puts forward and um, definitely uh, was humbled when I asked JR whether he's willing to join our show and uh, thank you JR too, for taking the time off of your weekend to actually join this show. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I'm, I'm very humbled. Um, it's grateful to be on the show and I really appreciate you having me on today. It's my pleasure. Uh, JR, tell us a little bit about your own YouTube channel. You have a channel called The Dividend Tree. Uh, when did you create this channel? What inspired you to start this channel in the first place? Oh, sure. So I started this channel back in October of 2020. And basically, I had two reasons why I started the channel. So the first reason is I remember what it was like when I knew nothing about the stock market. I mean, let's be honest. If you don't have a family member or a trusted friend or a mentor who is going to show or teach you these things, for me, it was such an overwhelming experience because I didn't have any of that. So I'll never forget when I took my first options class. And I, I, I recall asking the instructor, I, I asked him a question. And he looked at me like, one, that was stupid. But two, he, he was like, uh, I can't answer that question because you have to pay for the next class for your, answer, for your question to be answered. And I already put like 2000 for this class. And in my head, I was thinking... There's no way I can put another 2000 or another 5000 You're going to take all my trading money. And so to make a long story short, I just decided to learn this stuff myself. Um, you can do it uh, with trial and error. I mean, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. I did. And so I just thought it would be nice to create content for people and share what I know and what I've been through and hopefully steer them in the right way. You know, I never, I'll never forget that feeling of helplessness, of being overwhelmed, and not being able to ask anybody any questions. Um, so for my channel, I hope that you can learn basics like reading financial statements, where to find dividend stocks, how to, how to pick them, um, and then mainly not to rely on anyone, including me or my channel. So here's the thing. When you learn this stuff, nobody can take it from you. There's a lot of power in that. So I want the viewer to take what I have to share, and if they find some nuggets or whatever. I really want them to make it their own. And so the second reason was I wanted to create a community with others who are interested in the market because it's great meeting other people who are pursuing the same goals, learning from other channels at the same time. So this is a great community and I'm really just happy to play a small role. You are definitely playing a, a big role, in my view, uh, JR, there um, through your your contents, through educating. What, one thing I really like about, about your videos is the fact that you just don't necessarily um, pick a stock and share that this is the stock, but you also talk about the process, how, how you do the research. And uh, I know in one of your videos, in fact, you were talking about even what are the criteria for you picking a dividend stock, which we will get into in some of our future questions. But um, speaking of dividend stocks, since... That's the, even the title of your channel. And um, you, you, from the videos that you've made, it appears that you are a big fan of uh, dividend investing and are working towards uh, building a stock portfolio that generates passive income for retirement years. Uh, I think that's uh, what I heard from one of your videos, as well as according to the uh, description of um, your channel. In fact, uh, in one, one of the most recent interaction that we had, uh, I think I commented on one of your videos. And in, in one of your responses, you shared with me uh, how... Um, Boring and predictable business models are what you like when you were reflecting on solid <laughs> dividend paying companies. So tell us a little bit more about that, especially in this day and age where a lot of high growth stocks are out there and can allure many young investors um, to really pick them. Absolutely. You know, that's a great question. I think to answer this question, though, you have to understand <laughs> how I first got started. So I first started by trading penny stocks, day trading. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the worst way to get started mm -hmm. because it's so stressful. And I had no idea what I was doing. 
there was no risk management. I didn't even know about position sizing. And to be honest, I didn't know anything. <laughs> uh, I guess you could say that um, I graduated from that to go to options, which is probably not the right way to do this. And so the funny story is I had about 30,000 that I was playing with and I ended up making 70,000 profit in one month. And wow. I was like, I'm a freaking genius. This is so easy. You know, anybody can do this. And I remember I called my parents, I called my sisters and I told them, I said, look, you guys, I know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to retire from my job in one year. I'm going to have $870,000 at the rate of them going. And this is going to be off the hook. And, you know, I remember them telling me they were so excited for me, but at the same time, they were cautious and they were like, maybe you should take half of that money, you know, just, just put it in a savings account and come down from this high of yours. And I was like, are you crazy? Why would I stop now? I'm just getting started. And so that was a phone call. And literally two weeks later, I lost 68,000 of that. Oh, wow. Okay. And so, you know, I had two options at that point. I could either say options are terrible. They're dangerous. You know, I'm going to quit. Or the second option is you can make money in options, but you have to learn how to keep it and to grow it. And obviously I didn't know how to do that. So that's where I took that options class in the beginning of the interview that I told you guys about. Mm -hmm. And then years later, is when I found dividend growth investing. So when I found this strategy, I really understood what it had to offer. So for me, it was a no brainer. To be able to have time and compounding really work for me in a passive way that is low stress, uh, yeah, sign me up for sure. And once I got my first dividend check, I was hooked. I started the dividend journey last year and I wanted to be able to document my results. I do the dividend monthly review videos, not as a way to brag or say, hey, look how much money I have, because I don't even have that much. But as a way to show other people, there is a way to do this safely, not so much stress, like with penny stocks or options, um, and then to inspire and motivate others so that you can see that you can grow generational wealth and passive, passive income over time. And for me, it's not hard to manage this portfolio. Uh, Literally, you can decide how much work you want to put into this. So now referring to your question about being boring and having predictable business models, I absolutely love that. So if I'm going to utilize this dividend growth strategy, I can't invest in companies who are going to cut their dividend, suspend their dividend, or absolutely eliminate it. Um, that's going to really mess up how I predict what income is going to come in each month, quarter, and year. So now that I have a family, I'm not doing this for excitement or adrenaline rush or bragging rights. I'm doing this because I'm trying to build wealth and to provide for my family. It's a very different mindset. And when you're by yourself, look, you only have to look out for you. It's an entirely different situation when you have a family and you need a way to provide for them without a lot of maintenance or stress. So it's like what Peter Lynch said, I go for a business that any idiot can run. Because sooner or later, any idiot probably is going to be running it. And when I read that, I was like, there's a lot of truth to that. So let's take real estate, for example. Everybody knows about real estate. It's created so many millionaires. And for me, I love this sector, but I don't want the headaches of owning real estate. So I'd rather invest in a net lease REIT. Specifically, I love triple net lease REITs. And an example of those are like Realty Income, ticker symbol O. Uh, you got Agree Realty Corporation, which is ticker symbol ADC. These are great examples of high quality triple net lease REITs. And their business model is simple to understand. Uh, you're basically a landlord to Walmart, Target, uh, let's see, uh, Walgreens, CVS, FedEx. So a lot of these are essential businesses that will continue to, to, to be open, whether you're in a recession you have wars uh, or, or even what we experienced last year during the pandemic. So now to answer your last question about should a young person start a dividend portfolio? Now, look, I remember when I first started, I wanted to just hit home runs. You know, it's exciting. You know, I can tell my family or, or friends, look how much money I just made on this one trade. But now looking back, it was actually quite foolish. Um, I'd rather much hit singles, doubles consistently with low stress. 
So you're going to have YOLO trades. You've got FOMO. And these are very real things. And, you know, with the internet, with social media, with YouTube, it's hard not to get sucked into this. And sometimes, unfortunately, you have to go through what I did so that I could actually see the value in the strategy of dividend growth investing. Because if I didn't go through this, well, actually, I know. If I didn't go through this, I would have never looked at this because I remember hearing about dividend investing and I was like, you're crazy. I'm not going to invest money for 2% return for one year and you're paying me a small little dividend every three months. It just didn't excite me or entice me. But that's what I love now is it's the allure of dividend growth investing is it's simple, it's low stress, and over time, it will compound. So in all honesty, I will say to a young person, have both a dividend portfolio and a growth portfolio. Look, I did it. I was you. I was that young person who didn't want to invest in dividend stocks. And, you know, but they really do complement one another. You know, for example, let's look back at last February or, or this February, this most last month, two months ago, the end of February and early March, you had this huge pullback and stocks are taking, you know, Neo, Tesla, Palantir, et cetera. But my dividend portfolio, it was hardly even down. And you got to see a rotation from growth to value stocks. So you have some stocks that have recovered since then over the last three weeks. And, you know, the QQQ is what, like almost at their 52 week high again. But my point is have a growth portfolio if you choose because you're young, uh, you want to take a little bit more risk. You probably don't have a family. You know, you, you may even haven't even graduated college yet. But at the same time, at least consider a dividend portfolio because it's going to bring down your volatility in your overall strategy and your mental health. And who knows? Over time, you never know. This dividend portfolio could replace your income at your job. Um, if you, or if you lose your job, maybe that dividend income can help pay for bills during a stressful time. So for me, my dividend portfolio is my core portfolio, and I have other portfolios with different goals, but they're secondary. This is my core thing that I'm really focused on, and I hope that by creating this channel that I'm sharing my dividend journey so people can see that power of time and compounding so that they can see, oh, wow, you know, yeah, you may start small, but once this thing starts snowballing, you're literally growing your income every month. And um, look, I'm not selling you anything. Nobody has to start a dividend portfolio. You know, I'm not getting paid for this or anything like that. I just really wish I started this when I was a teenager or in my early 20s. And I just want to say, having said that, it's never too late to start. Totally, JR, totally. And it was a huge um mindset uh, change as well for you like i mean going from uh the one extreme i would say from uh, investing in penny stocks and option trading all the way to now uh, a huge emphasis and focus on dividend value uh stocks i think it's a as you've we've probably experienced the the whole spectrum and um it's it's very uh, valuable and information and nice to know how someone like your yourself who've gone through all of it how now given the circumstances that you're in in terms of the family and the stress and having experienced that the ups and downs why uh, you think uh, investing in a uh, quality high quality dividend paying companies is the right choice for you and sharing that with our audience i think that that's really invaluable that's okay. amazing you, you talked about uh, how, uh, of course, the, the, the beauty of that compounding and over time, you know, you see how uh, through the power of compounding and as, how you grow your portfolio, your dividend, expected dividend uh, amount is also growing over time. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, the ADI or annual dividend income, the projected annual dividend income um, term. Uh, and uh, how do you use that as, as, a, as a metric for, to track your progress? Is that um, the end goal for you, or is that more so like a measure along the way to keep you keep your 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 progress up on, on check? Oh sure, um, great question. Um, <laughs> I think you can tell from my videos. Like I love ADI, like annual dividend income. This is this is like my freedom number. Okay, so and you get to literally watch in real time over the course of a month, a quarter, or a year, a decade, etc. And 
I focus on this more than my account value. Because look, markets are going to go up and down. Well, that means your account value is going to go up and down. Okay. And, you know, I don't want to focus on that. What I want to focus on, on what I can control. I can control when the market goes up or when it goes down. But this ADI number, oh yeah, I, I have a say in this. And that is me putting money in every month. And I like that I can keep track of this on my spreadsheet because it motivates me to see my progress each month. And then, you know, I get to sh show my wife or like, you know, I have my son and I'm like, you see the son? Like, you see the ADI number? This is, this is what you want to like focus on. And at some point in the future, that number is going to pay for all my expenses as well as my way of life. And that's very motivating for me and my family. You know, I don't really like, like the 4% rule when you retire um, because you're basically taking money out of the account where I like relying on the dividend income, live off the dividends. And then that way I still have print the principal intact. So I can pass that on to my son, his children, et cetera. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about ADI. Love it. Love it. And uh, the reference to the 4% rule and how you're, you're, you're rather perhaps not necessarily um, uh, could take money out of your the initial investment amount and rather perhaps more so build that annual dividend income and over time grow that. Um, it's, it's very wise. Uh, you obviously talking about the dividend stocks, JR, um, you're a big fan of dividend stocks. We know that. Um, how do you go about picking those uh, dividend stocks? I know you have an extensive video on that on, one, on your channel, so we'll be sure to add a link to the video and the description of the video. But do you mind um, maybe at a high level sharing with us some of those key criteria that you uh, go about when picking quality dividend stocks? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So for the first thing I'm going to do is go to simplysaydividends.com. Um, this site is so valuable for me. Uh, this is where I want to check the very first thing I'm going to do is what is their dividend safety score? Okay. Because for me, if I'm going to invest in dividend paying stock, I need to make sure that they're not going to cut, suspend, eliminate it right after I buy it. Because um, that's just going to totally mess up my projections, what I expect for my income. So to help prevent this as best as possible, and you're not going to be hundred percent. Okay. I'm not, here to say, if you follow my steps, that you're never going to have a dividend cut or suspension, et cetera. But yeah, you definitely can prevent a lot of those from happening um, by using the site, by picking high quality companies. So what I like to do is pick a score of 61 or higher. Um, and then after this, I like to focus on their payout ratio. And I say this in general terms, that I want my payout ratio for a company, for most companies to be below 60%. I think that's a, that's a nice, sweet number, but you also have different sectors and you're going to have different payout ratio that, that you want to look for. And I actually talk about that in the video. So it may not make sense right now, but it, it will when you watch the video. Um, now, if you want to know what a payout ratio is, basically what it is, is a company um, is going to pay out their uh, earnings in the form of a dividend. So let's just say, uh, a company pays out 60% of their dividends um, from their earnings. Well, they still have 40% left um, to put for R&D, to keep the business going, et cetera. What you have to look for is you don't want to see companies that have like 100% payout ratio. Or sometimes, like I'm in some of these right now, like an oil company, Exxon, it's like 170%. Well, on my spreadsheet, you'll see that it's, it's in red. Because I want to know, whoa, JR, like uh, it's red, something's wrong here. You know, they're paying out more dividends than they're actually bringing into the company. Huge red flag. They can't do that long term. Um, they're going to either cut it, suspend it, or eliminate it. Luckily, oil has bounced back. And so now they're going to be making good money again because oil is around 60 bucks. So, so that's what I really want to focus on are those two things. And there's a lot more metrics that I go through in the video. So if you guys are interested, you can check that out if you'd like. Perfect. Thanks for sharing those tips, JR. Now, because the ADI is a big metric for you, do you, uh, when you decide on the company, let's say on this top four to six um, high dividend um, paying companies that you want to invest in, do you still try to um, buy them perhaps at the right price too? Um, <laughs> Or not so much, it doesn't matter to you as much uh, because you're holding on to them for long term. 
Oh, no, absolutely. Um, like, I like margin of safety. So in the video, I'll even talk about how, like, the first three parts are going to be about fundamental analysis and my process with that. But the fourth step is going to be about technical analysis. I I'm a believer in it. You know, some people think it's hocus pocus, whatever. That's fine. Um, but for me, you know, and I've studied so many different um, methodologies, whether it's GAN, Elliott Wave, et cetera. For me, I just like ranges. Um, you can draw them out on a chart, and then I use Fibonacci numbers from those ranges to pick targets going up and down. And so I like to use that, but I also go in and I talk about, you know, I like Morningstar, CFRA. I like to get those fair value targets. I put them on the chart, and then I can see, okay, from a fundamental standpoint, you know, maybe Johnson Johnson's fair value is 150. You know, if it's trading like at 170, I kind of don't feel real comfortable buying there because I'm, I'm overpaying. Okay. Now let's just say, for example, I want to, I want to own JJ and I don't own any shares. I may just buy one share at 170 and then dollar cost my way. And then if it gets to below 150, then I'll add more shares. And that, that's just kind of like what I do. That's that's smart. Yeah. Sometimes I, f I follow that approach, especially the latter part that you talked about. Like, let's say if there's a company that I, I don't have any shares of, but I really, really want um, based on my research, I really wanted to uh, start building a position. I start very small and then you don't have to rush it. Right. So you would see how uh, if you were right and it continues to go up, then probably it's a good good call for you to even start that position earlier on. But if it goes down, at least you didn't put a, a large portion of your investments into uh, that stock at that time. You just started a very uh, kind of basic uh, uh, position in that company. Totally agree. Yep. Wonderful. Now, what stocks or sectors are you most excited about uh, in 2021, uh, JR, uh, even within the realm of dividend investing? Oh, sure. Um, you know, I see the possibility of inflation coming. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't, I don't know when exactly or how this is going to come about. But I want to make sure I have tangible assets in my portfolio. So real estate, commodities, utilities. I want exposure in food companies, healthcare. So just, just throw out some companies. For real estate, I really like ADC, which is Agree Realty Corporation. I'm actually going to do a video on it. Um, I like Realty Income, uh, WP Carey. National retail properties, these are all triple net lease companies. Um, for commodities, gold, oil, those types of things, you know, usually tend to do well uh, with inflation. Uh, utilities, look, utilities companies, they're just going to pass that cost onto the customers. And so I might as well at least, you know, get a dividend from, from, from those companies that are going to pass that cost on to me. And the same thing with food companies, you know, Tyson Foods, Kellogg's, General Mills, et cetera. Um, they're just going to pass all that onto their customers. And so I might as well get something back in return. Uh, healthcare, Johnson & Johnson, Advi, Bristol Myers. Um, I, now look, I'm not saying go buy these stocks tomorrow. Um, you know, obviously gotta, you know, look at charts or, you know, do your own due diligence. I'm just saying, I just wanna make sure I have these sectors and these stocks in my portfolio so that, you know, if inflation starts ramping up that I can somewhat protect myself. For our viewers, actually, that uh, are new uh, to investing or young individuals who are perhaps just getting started, what uh, piece of advice would you pr provide, uh, JR, to them? Oh, sure. Um, I would just say this is an awesome time to get started investing. Like if you're young, um, the sooner the better, uh, because you have so much time on your side. Uh, I, I wish I used that time more wisely. So I hope for you, you can take with... Uh, you know, an episode like this or Mo's channel and, and really educate yourself. So for starters, before even investing, my first tip would be get your house in order. You know, do you have credit card debt? Do you have major student loans? You really want to make sure you, you take care of that, tackle that and create a budget. For me, I like a zero based budgeting um, system that I use so that I know where every penny is going um, and every penny, every dollar has a name on it. Uh, now, after you've gotten your house in order, then I would start to just get your toes, you know, wet and start an ETF like VT or VTI. So VT is the whole stock market. So you're going to have like over 8,000 holdings in one basket. Uh, it's a great safe way to start. It's very diversified. Um, VTI is another good one. 
because it's literally the entire U.S. stock market. It's going to have over 3,500 holdings. Um, my next advice would be from here, depending on your personality, will depend largely on what strategy you want to implement. Obviously, I'm biased now um, through experience and such that I really like dividend growth investing as my core strategy and growth options, crypto, all that other stuff is very secondary. But if you're like, no, JR, I 100% all in on growth. Okay, cool. Have growth as your core, but then maybe as your secondary, a small dividend portfolio that is, you know, increasingly getting dividends and then you can reinvest those dividends on a small basis. Look, you're not going to get rich doing this, you know, overnight, but I'm talking decades. You know, if you're 20 and you're doing this, I'm talking 40, 50 years that you have that compounding working for you. Um, and like I said before, watching channels like Mo's um, is a great place to start reading, finding out what you're comfortable with. Do you like ETF stocks, a mix of both? But just don't feel pressured to do something you don't understand. There's nothing wrong with learning, taking the time to learn a strategy and go, does this strategy make sense? You know, um, and then again, you can't go wrong with any of the ETFs I've mentioned above, you know, for a growth ETF, QQQ, an ARC fund, something like that, I think are great places to start. And just remember, don't focus just on the end result. Enjoy this journey. I mean, you have so much life to live between now and when you fire or retire. Um, and my last bit of advice would be open an, a Roth IRA. I mean, if you open up a Roth IRA, let's just say 22, okay? It, you have those time, dividend compounding is going to be tax-free for the next 40 years. I mean, that is, it's mind-boggling uh, thinking about that, obviously, because I know about that now. But when I was 20, I didn't. I was all about hitting home runs. So that would be my advice. Great advice. Definitely uh, capitalizing on those tax advantage accounts that are, exist in your respective country. Uh, I think it's it's very wise. Uh, if you have an account where you can grow your investments tax free, be sure to take advantage of that because here it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, I know Warren Buffett is famously um, you know quoted for saying you know rule number one: uh, never lose money. Rule number two. Uh, never forget rule number one. Uh, I think my addition to that is that there are there comes cases where you. I mean, I know Warren Buffett doesn't really mean that you would never lose money, but if you do, I think it's also important for you to reflect on it and l really learn from that experience. Which I can see that's something that you've done, right? You've had successes, but you've also lost some money along the way. Learned from that, reflected on that, and really uh, adjusted your strategy. And I think that's something that you were talking about too. If dividend investing, you think that maybe it's not that your first choice, that's fine, but maybe have that as an alternative. Give that a try on the side, perhaps as a secondary um, portfolio. And over time, you're going to see. And over time, you're going to see, is ETF investing for you? Is high growth investing for you? Penny stocks. Um, and then you're going to pick the one that really is your sweet spot and something that you're comfortable with because it depends on you, also your risk tolerance, your comfort level, how much stress you're, you're willing to take as well, and all different considerations that is very can be very subjective too at times absolutely yep uh, what, what are uh, some of the um, resources in terms of perhaps uh, books uh, or audiobooks or podcasts uh, things like that that you've come across that you have really liked and really helped you uh, along this journey when it comes to finance and investing are there certain favorite ones that you can recommend to our viewers Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I love reading. Um, that, that's what's really helped me along my journey. Um, I'll never forget the first book I read on investing, which was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and by Robert Kiyosaki. As this was the first investment book that I read, and I just, it's just so, it's just, it's just such an easy read. You, you know, you don't have to have an MBA or anything like that. And I just like how he explained the rat race, you know, and as well as you want to be a business owner, you want to be an investor. You know, or, you know, if you don't want to be an investor, fine, at least be an investor and invest in those people who have the abilities to come up with great ideas. Um, and then at the same time, while you're, you know, investing in their companies, they're also paying you a return back. Um, I also love uh, Trading in the Zone. Uh, it's such a great book about discipline, trade plan, risk management, which are things that are critical 
whether you're doing penny stocks, uh, day trading or, or dividend growth investing, you have to have a trade plan. You, I mean, you can't just, you can't. So um, I really like that book. Another book is Remnants of a Stock Operator. It's a story about Jesse Livermore. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a tragic story. And, uh, but I could relate to, to what he was doing um, with the way he was trading in the beginning. Okay. Um, you, you, you're a speculator. I mean, you are taking risk when you're trading penny stocks, whether you're dra day trading, um, directional trading with options. You know, I, uh, first of all, let me just say I love options and I'm going to do videos about options. I, I'm just going to do it in a very different way than what I think most people are accustomed to. So um, just throwing that out there. And then um, about Jesse Livermore is I learned so much about getting rid of the noise. There is so much noise out there. You can read articles. You can, you know, watch so many YouTube channels, you know, uh, invest in this stock. It'll 10 times in the next week. Okay. If you read stuff like that, just, just run. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to save your money. Um, you have to own every trade you do. Okay. Uh, you cannot blame other people. Oh, well, that, you know, that YouTube channel said buy the stock and then it went to zero. Um, no, it, th that is the, you're not taking accountability for your decisions and it is crucial to do that. So those, those books are great to get an aspect of trading, uh, get your feet wet with investing and, and really focus on buy assets. You know, when you're young, especially when you get your first job, you're like, I want a car, you know, I want to look good. You know, I want to impress the lady, whatever, but you, I cannot say this enough. Focus on assets that are going to pay you because I'm telling you, you buy that nice car that costs so much money, $500 payment in a month. That is crazy. You could put $500 a month into a Roth, pay 6,000 bucks for the year because that's all you're allowed to put in one um, when you're when you're young anyways um, and have that grow for the next 30 years. Oh my God, you're a millionaire. OK, so that those are the those are the three books that I really recommend to start with. Lovely. Thanks for sharing those, JR. Yeah, those um, income generating assets as opposed to the ones that are, are like rather depreciating. Yeah, it's a it's a uh, it's, it's a big breakthrough. De I've read definitely Rich Dad Poor Dad. The other two books that you recommended, I haven't read, but I agree with you. The Rich Dad Poor Dad was one of the books that is so easy to read. And I think um you can relate to it. Like I don't think you need uh, like a high degree to really be able to read through it. And it is a, almost like a wake up call. I, I think it's definitely one great book for many um, individuals to actually read through it and maybe reflect on it and see how, what, what that, what that means to them. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, JR, if you could go back in time, um, would you change anything in your investment strategy or approach? You know, that's a great question. Um, I say this all, all the time to my son. I, I always tell him, you know, I wish I knew about dividend growth investing when I first started. But you know what? I know what would have happened. Even if someone, even if it was a trusted friend or a family member, and they said, hey, JR, look, I'm going to show you this way. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. You're going to have to be patient. It's not get rich quick. But over time, you will build wealth. I know what I would have done. You know, being young, I would have just said, uh, yeah, that's for an old person's strategy. And, you know, I want to get it now, you know, instant gratification. And so from that aspect, yeah, it would have been nice, but I already know what would have happened. I wouldn't have listened to it. And I know I had to go through this in order to really appreciate the value of this strategy. And I think sometimes, at least for people, or at least for me, I had to go through those ups and downs. Um, if I didn't go through that, it would have just, I, I don't think I would have been able to implement the strategy the way it was supposed to be uh, implemented. Totally. Yeah. Sometimes we, it's just, it's funny how uh, we, in, in, in our lives as humans, you know, we have to go through certain experiences and, you know, personally experienced whether that in, in some cases can be a negative experience, but through that, maybe you learn as opposed to if someone like our, I'm reflecting on, let's say our parents, they might have told us like, you know, 
this is good for you. This is good for you. But when you're, when you're young, for instance, you may not really fully realize it. But now fast forward, when you get to that certain age, when you become a parent yourself, even you realize like, oh, my parents had, they knew about it. And I mean, I'm talking about in the context of parenting, because that's the topic that parents are really good at. Um, but let's say <laughs> even in the context of investing, like, you know, someone who is really good at investing and they've done it and they've learned it you might uh, be a little bit uh, skeptical about it because, you know, you haven't seen that. It, maybe you think it's not right for you, but I guess the um, moral of the story is perhaps keep an open mind and educate yourself, like uh, hear different uh, perspectives, also see how other people are doing, how they are applying that strategy to their advantage and why they're doing it. I think just be, um, knowing what they are doing alone is not perhaps enough. Knowing why they are doing it and what really inspires them or motivates them to actually pick that strategy is also probably a big part of this the whole uh, story. Oh, yeah, for sure. Dear, as m- my last questions uh, for you, and thank you so much for spending this time with us. Are there certain uh, key lessons or final words of advice that you have for our viewers here on Momentum Channel and also um, for our viewers overall who's, who have stumbled upon this video um, uh, that you would like to share with them? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. You know, for me, the market is funny. Um, I would say the number one thing, the, the first thing that I learned about the market was psychology. Okay. The market is going to reveal to you exactly how you're going to respond to fear and greed. Okay. And <laughs> starting out, you're not going to like how you respond to fear and greed. Okay. Because you, you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And for instance, when the market, if you've never been through a market crash, the first time you do it, you're going to sell. You're going to panic sell. You just want to get the cash so that you can stop the pain because it hurts. Absolutely. I mean, this is your hard earned money that you are investing and day after day after day, it's just going down. So you're going to make a mistake there. Okay. Now the flip side is this, and this is, <laughs> this is a definitely a lesson I had to learn um, is you're going to think you're a genius because the market's in a bull market and everything you do, you're making money. Okay. Like literally I told my family, I was a genius at this and I'm going to retire in a year. I mean, looking back on that, I mean, it's so foolish and I just laugh all the time. But so what you're going to do is you're going to go all in when the market is at the top. Okay. And then you're going to be left holding the bag and it's all because of greed. So, you really have to learn how to keep your emotions in check as best as possible. So what I do for this is I create a trading plan as, or, or trading guidelines, whatever you want to call it, for every strategy that I implement. So if you're a trader, I don't care if you're trading penny stocks or whatever, you have got to know if the market goes down 5, 10, 30, 50 percent, what are you going to do? You have got to know because I'll tell you this right now, if you don't have a plan, when that happens, oh, and it will, it will happen. I, I promise you that. Um, you're going to panic. You're going to do literally the worst thing possible at the worst time. And the same thing goes for taking profit. If your position goes up 5, 10, 15, 20%, what are you going to do? You know, whether you're a trader or a long term investor, it's a very different mindset. You know, for my dividend portfolio, yeah, you know, I'll, you guys see it in my div- dividend monthly review. I I sell. I sell some stocks every month because some of them have gone up 100%. You know, I want to reduce my cost basis. Some of my positions have literally gone up more than 100%. I sell half. If I sell half, I have no risk anymore. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. And, you know, um, so my whole point of this is you're going to learn psychology. The market will teach you that. Okay. The question is, is are you going to learn from it? So number two is risk management, okay? I had no idea what the heck I was doing. Actually, I had no business really doing the stuff I was doing, none. And um, so the key to being comfortable is controlling your risk and your position size, okay? And this even applies to dividend growth investing. If you're like, so like, I'm scared, I don't wanna lose my money, just start with ETFs, okay? Like an index fund, You know, like I said, VT, VTI, uh, VU, SPLG, any of those kind of things. It's very safe. You know, you got hundreds, thousands of companies. Okay. But um, if you're trading options, 
or if you're trading penny stocks or day trading or even swing trading, you have got to position size properly. And, and I always say this, if you're going to go that route, just put $500 in each trade. Okay. Because what, 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 or pick any number, hundred dollars, the number doesn't matter, but keep it the same. Okay. Don't do what I did. What I did was I put in like 5,000 bucks and then I made money. Oh man, this is easy. Well, what did I do? I put 10,000. Next thing you know, you're at a size that you can't handle mentally. Okay. You, you, you won't be able to handle it and you're going to lose. And then when you lose, you're like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> and uh, I, I really don't want that for you. So number three, I'm going to say that the market taught me my true personality of how I should invest. Okay. And going through all of this, it taught me dividend growth investing is my favorite strategy to use when investing in the market. Now, look, I've tried futures, commodities, you know, all the everything. Okay. But when I truly found dividend growth investing, I felt like I was at home. Everything just clicked. It made sense. So this is my core strategy. And I'm really focused on creating passive income over time and just have that compounding work for you. Um, and so th that's what I would say that I've learned from the market so far. Amazing uh, tips and lessons. Thanks for sharing those, uh, JR, um, with, with myself and with our viewers here on Momentum Channel. Thank you so much, JR, for joining um, this episode of Momentum Mondays. I know for, for a fact that I learned a lot through this uh, sh short interview that we had together, and I'm sure that our viewers uh, on the channel and YouTubers are going to really learn a lot from this video as well. I really appreciate it. I know you had to take time off of your a weekend to uh, meet with me and have this conversation. So thank you for, for doing that. Oh, you got it, Mo. Uh, pleasure's all mine. I had, this was a blast and uh, I had a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much, guys, for watching this episode of Momentum Mondays. I hope it was valuable to you and you learned something from it. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from the video as well. We've added the contact link to our invited guest to the description of the video, so be sure to check them out. And lastly, if you haven't done that already, uh, please subscribe to Momentum channel. Here on Momentum, we post weekly various videos about the stock market investing, stock analysis, financial planning, and uh, finances. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.